on, as they're come up on the screen, I will go over some of the announcements for us for this week. <clears throat> As they're coming up, I just want to highlight one announcement that will not be on the screen and that you, many of you may already know, but our beloved Chelsea, um, who's been a part of this community for so long and now will be doing her internship at American Lutheran in Burbank, will be having an installation service on next Sunday as the vicar at American Lutheran Church. We would very much like to join and participate in that worship service at the point where Chelsea is actually being installed and we're trying to find out all the details for that so that we can put in our Slack a link that you can click and join over at the point of her installation so that we can continue to support her on her journey through seminary and as she pursues ordained ministry in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. So keep an eye open in, in this week as we get more information. We will pass it on to you that the time that that will happen and then put a link in our worship service so that all of those who choose, and I hope all of us will choose to click over and join and be a part of her installation. Uh, Sunday morning prayer um, happens immediately after our uh, Zoom worship service, and um, you're welcome to join that at any time for as long as you're able to stay, and I'm sure Mylene and those who gather for prayer will um, appreciate you being there. If you're not able to join, then keep in mind those in our community who need prayer during this week, and that's really all of us. Each second Sunday, we have a children's message. We're always looking for new volunteers who say, hey, I'll do it. And we even have resources available for you to look up. You don't have to create any material on your own. We'll give you the scripture lesson that we're preaching on and or the theme. And you could come up with your own children's message or you could find something that connects to the theme. Grief support continues to happen on Wednesdays from 6.30 to 7.30. It's not a counseling session. We're not trying to solve your problems. We're just here to walk alongside you in whatever loss you're experiencing in your life. Thursday evenings, we have Bible studies from 7 to 8 p.m. And uh, monthly Twin Valley Food Pantry donations and SV, SFV Rescue Mission meal serving continues to happen as an outreach ministry of this church and is so much a part of the identity of this church. So if you would like to be involved in that, uh, contact the church office and they will get you more information. I'm available at the hours that are listed on the screen for pastoral care. In the event of an emergency, um, Lisa has my number and you can always contact me and I'm available then as well. Um, prayer requests, if you have them, you can later on in this worship service put them in the chat. You can send them to the email that's listed on the screen and um, we will make sure that it, we include you in our prayers and thoughts. And I invite each of you, as we go through this series on Nehemiah, to be in prayer about the next steps that Bethel will take, because there's some big steps coming up, and we need to walk into this future together in um, unity, not necessarily uniformity, but unity as we approach wherever God is taking us as a people. Um, and if you have any news that you'd like to share with the community, some joys or some concerns, you can call, uh, email uh, Lisa Kelly at the email that's listed on the screen. Thank you for taking this time to listen to our announcement. The big one coming up, um, in addition to Chelsea's installation, is we have a family beach day on July the 26th from 10 a.m. until, you know, whenever. So please mark your calendar and as many of you that can come out, bring your suntan lotion. California is open now, so we don't have to have a mask. And let's go out and work on our copper tone tan. Well, I don't need to do that, but you can do it if you need to. So um, beach day, family beach day. I think we had so much fun at the picnic and it was nice to get out and be with each other. And let's do that again and continue to build family here at Bethel ELCA Church. I think those are all the announcements that I have. There's one more, Pastor Kenneth, and that's that um, I don't know if church family you remember, but we passed a six-month budget six months or so ago, 
uh, because we didn't know where the future was quite taking us. And so in July, we'll need to have another congregational meeting and vote for another six month budget and vote for officers and things. So we look forward to that and we will let you know the date after tomorrow. Um, we'll be sure to let you all know. So we look and forward which to positions on council are opening up um, for, for that vote, Lana? Uh, president know? and members at large. Okay, so be in prayer, please, about those crucial positions as we um, embark on this journey together in the future. And so if God is speaking to your heart and giving you a desire to be in a leadership role, please let us know because we desperately need people who are committed to helping us move forward. I invite you at this time to say the peace of the Lord be with you and greet those around you and in our community with peace. Shalom. Peace of the Lord be with you all, also with you. Good morning, Bethel fam. Let us worship together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me be an instrument to exalt, to extend Jesus' name globally as the waters cover the sea open the heavens O oh lord and pour out your spirit cover the earth with your glory cover the earth with your glory cover the earth with the sound of heaven oh cover the earth with your glory Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Cover the earth. That's our prayer. Yeah, yeah. Verse two, let me speak. Let me speak what you say. Let the sound prepare the way. Kingdom come. Globally, as the waters cover the sea, open the heavens, O oh Lord. God, pour out your spirit, O oh, cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with your glory. Oh, cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Oh, cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Cover the earth. Well, 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 well. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're starting with open up the heavenlies. Sing, fam. Open up the heavenlies. Let a new sound be released As the waters cover the sea Cover the earth Sing that again Open up the heavenlies Of the heavenlies Let a new sound be released As the waters cover the sea Cover the earth Cover the earth with the glory Yeah Cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound. Oh, cover the earth. Cover the earth. Cover the earth. Oh, cover the earth with your glory. And cover the earth with your glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven sing all of the earth will adore you all of the earth will adore you all the nations all of the nations adore you cover the earth cover the earth with the sound of heaven cover the earth 
Continue singing, church. <clears throat> Today's reading is from uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 1 to 10, the Psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? And my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. 
But I am a worm and not a human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. There ends the reading. Hi, everyone. So um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Kevin Logie. I'm speaking uh, for Pastor Kenneth today. He's given me this opportunity to speak on Father's Day. Crazy idea. I don't know what you were thinking, Pastor Kenneth, when you decided to ask me. Sometimes I feel like the most unholy person in church. And you asked me, and I immediately said yes, and then quickly realized, wait, what are you... What are you asking me to do? Are you asking me to do a reading? Are you asking me to give a sermon? Are you asking me to sing a song? I don't, I don't know what I'm being asked to do, but I said yes before I even thought about it. And um, thank you for asking because it's an, it's an absolute honor to be able to be up here in front of all of you guys and women. Um, I'd love to start with a prayer. <laughs> My son is making fun of me. Um, I'd love to start with a prayer. Um, Lord, Please uh, use your voice to guide me through this message. Pray for the fathers who are here, for who are a part of this community. Pray for the fathers who cannot be here. Pray for the fathers who struggle in their own demons. Pray for the fathers who are wonderful examples of community and love. And also, there are no fathers without mothers. And this will, will be father heavy, but... I've learned more from mothers than I have from fathers, I think. So thank you mothers for, for being there and being a, a part of this. Um, I'd love to bring my son up here really quickly. Come here, come here real quick, Parker. All right, come here, get up here. Stand up here. Yeah, stand up here. Yeah, stand here because the, the camera's up. So Parker, tell me what you think it means to be a good father. Uh, I don't know because I've never been one. No? No. No, but do you think you'll be a good father someday? Yeah, oh, of course. Oh, of course. Oh, okay, of great. Course. Of course. What do you think makes God a good father? Uh, he put the first speck of dirt on the world, so basically uh, you wouldn't be saying this, and no one would be here if it weren't for God, yeah. so. That's great. Okay, so so thank you, God, for the first yes. speck of dirt, and that yes, makes him a good father. Yes, for the first speck of dirt. And then I didn't ask you this question beforehand, but am I a good father? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course? Yeah. Okay, good. And that's all I need to do. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you, buddy. Um, you did great. Thank you. So, thank you for indulging me. Um, I, so I got asked to do this. And like I said, I immediately got scared and frightened. Um, what am I going to talk about? I, I, what am I going to say to this church and, and to this group of people that I care so much about, right? There are other fathers who are, who are more financially stable. There are other fathers who have more children. There are other fathers who can, who can build an addition on their house. They can pick up all their kids in their nice cars. They um, ha have all the wisdom that, that I don't have. And I, I was frozen. I didn't know what to talk about. I, I thought that I would come up here and I would give a, a book report on dads. I'd start, I'd do the WandaVision of dad history. I would go through and start with TV dads from the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. It would be, it'd be Father's know, Father Knows Best from the 50s. It'd be Danny Kaye. It would be Ricky Ricardo. It would be um, Mike Brady. It would be Danny Tanner. It would be um, the dad from Bonanza. I, it, it's all these TV dads who are iconic in our minds and our hearts. And I thought I would go through and I would talk about all of those dads and I would talk about how on TV, they're perfect. They come in and they have sage advice 
they're pleasant, they solve problems in 30 minutes, they um, let you know you're loved and they step away and then the moms take over and then they come in and they give their more advice and it's great. And I wanted to tell you about all of their failings, right? A, a lot of the TV dads, um, you know, they were secretly alcoholic, they were secretly abusive, they were forced to live in the closet as part of the LGBTQ community. And they're not perfect. They don't align up with what we are fed and, and what our visions are of fathers. And that's what I was raised on. I was raised on Nick at Night. I was raised on TV dads, like teaching me how to do everything right. And it's not true. It's not real. There's no, there's, there's no realness in all of that. And so the conclusion I came to is I, I can't spend 20 minutes talking about TV dads. That makes no sense. So I have to talk about my journey as a dad. And when I came to Bethel, it was not a good time for me. I wasn't a good dad. I was not a good partner. I was breaking all the commandments. I don't need to, that's another sermon that we can go into, but I, I was not present. I didn't have God in my life. I spent a lot of time pushing God away. I don't need him. I got to figure it figured out. Uh, I can say I'm spiritual and I love the universe, but that's not the same. Um, and I literally lived across the street and I would see Bethel and I'd be like, oh, what is that place? I don't, I don't know who goes there? Is it a is it a mosque? Is it uh, is it Catholic? Is it Jewish? Is it is it I don't know. I don't know. But I saw the cross on a regular basis, and we started coming because Ash offered a discount on the tuition at school, and it seems like a silly reason to go to church. But like, thank you, Ash. Thank you for 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 bringing us to church because. I would have never, and I needed it more than anything. I needed a father, I needed God in my life. And I would sit in, in the pews and I would hear the music and I would hear the message and I would be a part of all of you about a part of this community. And I would cry my face off like I'm trying not to do right now, but literally sobbing tears and We'd finish, I'd wipe my tears and I would go and have a donut and I would put on my TV dad face, right? Like I can talk weather, I can talk sports, I can talk, I can talk whatever you wanna talk about while I'm eating a donut because life is great. Um, but covering up all of that sadness and, and we all do that, right? I, I'm not the only one, we come to church, we, we are looking for guidance from our father, we are looking for love from our community and a lot of us are going through the same thing and, and you know, we're having these service conversations and, and they're great and I love them because it's helped me connect to every single one of you, but there's more going on underneath and I, I'm, I'm crying in the pews and I'm smiling eating donuts and, and, and thankful for all of that because this TV dad learned to become a father because of Bethel, there are so many great examples of, of strong men, strong women as well, uh, faith and, and God, and was guided on a path that I could have never expected. Um, I don't have a lot of money, so I offered my time. I would help with the audio, I would help with digital stuff. I would come and host bingo nights and, and be a part of this community in any way I could, even while thinking like, I don't deserve to be here. I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm at my lowest point. I, I'm, I've done all these wrong things. And why are these people here? Why are they hugging me? Why are they loving me? Why are they showing me that like I matter? And it's because of God. It's because God is present and, 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 and they've, he's taught them how to, to love and be giving and, and share and, and bring people into your community. And I'm so thankful for what Bethel has done for me and for my family. And, and I have friends in this community. I, I 
Um, we have a dad group. I got a text from the dad group this morning about getting together and, and I am a changed human being because of it. And I have spent every day since Pastor Kenneth has asked me to do this sermon, thinking about this sermon. And I was looking for dad experiences. I was, I was, I don't know the Bible as well as I could. I, I can't pick verses from the Bible. I can't uh, tell you what I th think about the Ecclesiastes or, or, or um, I, you know, I can't, I can't go into major detail, but what I do know is I feel connected to God and, and I prayed and, and hoped that he would give me uh, a message. And I was given those. I have, uh, obviously, Parker. It was his birthday. And he has a, a wonderful collection of grandfathers. He has, I think, three of them. And they all care very much for him. And so on the day of his birthday, and I, I think birthdays are really important for kids. I think as you get older, they matter less. But as a kid, I think it's really important. And first thing in the morning, his, his, his peepaw B calls, wants to talk to him, is excited to talk to him, wants to FaceTime, wants to see him, and, and, and was just overjoyed to tell this little boy that happy birthday. And his other grandfather, Peepaw Jay, I didn't, I didn't hear from him all day. I, I, I did the, the, the birthday stuff. We did, we did Six Flags. We did uh, desserts. We did big dinners and, and lived in gluttony which is one of the seven deadly sins. So we shouldn't always do that, but it was a birthday. So, and I didn't hear from Peepaw Jay and I was getting upset and I was getting angry. And how could this, how could he forget my son on his birthday? And I was really bothered by that. And, and then Peepaw Jay reached out and he said, hey, saw you on TV, really great commercial. Loved it, watched it five times. Thank you. On a regular day, that's awesome. I love you. Thank you, Dad. It's great. But this was Parker's birthday, and he had forgotten, and he didn't remember until I had posted something on Facebook, and he had sent a message realizing that he had forgotten and said, I love you. Give your son a hug and a squeeze, and I'm going to send you a box of sponge candy. And sponge candy, if you don't know, is one of the greatest candies of all time. It's from Fowler's in Buffalo. So, uh, Pastor Kay, when Cameron's in Buffalo, make sure she gets some followers. But Parker's never had it. He didn't know what it was. He's never liked it. So even that made me upset. Like, why are you going to send my kid candy that he doesn't even like? A couple days go by and I get a box in the mail and there's a card in there and it's got a nice message. There's two boxes of sponge candy. I only ate one and a half of them. So there's some left. And then Parker eats it. And before he even finishes his first bite, he goes, mm. This is the best candy I've ever had. Now, if I was upset and I'd stayed in that anger, I would have been screaming, God, why have you forsaken me? Dad, why haven't you not loved me the way I want you to love me? Why have you not given me what I need when I need it, when I want it right now, the way I deserve it? Well, God doesn't work that way. God doesn't work on, on my time. He doesn't teach me the lessons that I want to know on my time. And, and that's when Psalm 22 popped into my head. I didn't know it. I didn't know it was Psalm 22. I just knew that on the cross, Jesus yelled, God, why have you forsaken me? The ultimate moment of like, why are you not loving me? I'm right here. I am dying for you. And you, you're not doing anything for me. And he doesn't know that three days later, he's going to rise from, from the tomb. He doesn't know that God has a plan. God has a plan for Jesus. God has a plan for all of us. God loves us inherently. And what I took from this is the lessons that, first of all, patience. God is with us in those moments when we feel the most unloved, when we feel uh, unworthy when we feel the lowest of low. God is in those moments. Those are the teachable God moments. And also what he does, and then I, th like, I think in the past, I, I could have been very upset that God doesn't talk back. God doesn't give you messages. God doesn't tell, like, 
like in the Old Testament, God was talking to everyone. He's talking through burning bushes. He's talking through clouds. He's, he's making people build arcs. Like I'm just sitting here driving my Ford Fiesta, hoping he like gives me a green light while I'm driving down like Ventura. Um, and these are the moments when God speaks the loudest in these low moments, in these moments where I'm crying in the pews, it, it, when I'm thinking that my father doesn't think about me or doesn't care about me. Um, that's when he is speaking the loudest. And, and, and what I can take from that and not be angry and not sit in that, but what I can learn from that is, oh, I don't like it when this person doesn't reach out to me, or I feel lonely because these persons, these people are not thinking about me in my moment. So what does God want me to do? What does God show me? Well, God wants me to reach out. God wants me to build community. God wants me to be a father that teaches these lessons that I feel that I had been not given as a son. And that's when this wonderful idea of reaching out came to me. We were starting to gather again. We had, we had church meetings. We had uh, the picnic in the park. I was seeing your faces again. And I forgot how important this community was. And I wanted to reach out to a bunch of the fathers in this community. And I didn't get to as many as I liked. I, I would love to continue these conversations with the, with the fathers that I did talk to. And, and if I didn't get to you, I still want to talk to you. And I remember being nervous about calling, like, well, how, how, they're not going to want to talk to me. They, they've got busy lives. They're, they, don't, they don't need to, to spend 15, 20 minutes sharing their version of dadhood with me. But they all did. And, and, and I don't think any conversation was less than 20 minutes. I think some of them went 40. Some, I think one was close to an hour. And it was just a great reminder of, of what this community was. And, and, and over the last year or so and the, the pandemic and, and we've moved out of this building, we're in a difficult place and we are struggling and we are fighting to find a foothold in, in who we are in our faith and in our community. And being able to talk to all of you fathers and, and see the, the strength and, and the resilience that we have here. Um, I thought about leaving this church. It's the easy thing to do, right? There's a million reasons why I don't need to be here. I can go someplace else. I can do something. I can push God away. And, and I don't want to do that because we are beautiful. Bethel is beautiful. We, we are a part of something bigger and we need a father. We need a mother. We need a father. We, we, we need some guidance. And he is doing that and he is screaming so loudly we are we are small but we are mighty he is at those meetings he is here with us we may not be in that physical space anymore we may be looking for something new and it's going to be different and it's going to be change but god is with us and he's going to speak loudly and he is going to carry us through all of this with love and affection i am so thankful for the opportunity to get to speak to all of you um i wanted to end this with some fatherly advice, some, some generic fatherly advice. Kids stay in school. Don't do drugs. Eat your vegetables. Stay off the screens and TV. It'll rot your brain if you do it too much. Read books. Go out in nature. And more importantly, love everyone and tell the truth. Because when we do that, it may not be the easiest thing. The truth isn't easy. We've been in those rooms and, and sometimes we're saying things that may hurt someone else. Um, but if we say with love and we say with empathy and respect for each other, we can get through anything. And I learned that by listening to God. And so thank you, Bethel. And happy Father's Day to everyone. And let me just close with a prayer. Lord, Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for teaching me to be patient, to be forgiving, to be loving, and to be honest. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Kevin. Rev Kev. Let's sing together, fam. And I've heard a thousand stories of a word of faith. Think you're like, but I've heard the 
tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am oh and I I've seen many searching for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us let's sing you are perfect you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways yes you are perfect in all of your ways to us oh is love so undeniable i i can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love into love your good good father it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, yeah, it's who I am, it's who I am, yo, oh, oh, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, Mr. Claire. It's who I am. It's who I am, yes. No matter what our stories are, we are loved by good, good Father. Amen. When I was younger, I used to always think about the scripture, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when I was younger, I used to think, how can that be? It's always better to get gifts. However, as I have grown older, I have learned that by giving, we receive. Because by giving and in acts of charity, we can have healing from pain and we can have exchanges of love. And giving comes in many forms, not just financially, but in a smile to a stranger, in an act of kindness to a neighbor, in forgiving uh, a transgression committed against you, and many things. And so I would encourage all of you to think about charity in a different way and to realize that it is a way that God encourages us and gives to us because we open that gate when we give we receive. We receive love. We receive the spirit. 
So for those of you who can give financially, of course, we are very grateful. and There are ways on the screen. But not only financially, I encourage you to give in creative ways, in helping others, um, even donating your clothes, uh, you know, volunteering, um, kind words. There are many ways to give. And I believe that Bethel is filled with many giving people, loving, kind people, and I am grateful to be a part of this church. And also, Kevin, you did an awesome job today. It was very moving. So thank you for saying yes to the spirit. And um, I'd like to say an offering, a prayer for our offering today. Heavenly Father, God, Creator, thank you so much for this opportunity to join together yet again in worship. We pray your blessings upon this church, Lord, as we move forward. And we pray your blessings upon those uh, who are able to give and continue uh, to support this church in any way that they can. Uh, may all of the members here be blessed and may we move forward in a way that is pleasing to you. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now it is time for prayers. So while I am reading our prepared, prepared prayers, if you have prayer requests that you'd like to place in chat, we will also bring them up to the Lord. If we could just take a moment now and breathe in the goodness of God and breathe out all the cares and troubles of this last week and in the world. Dearest Creator God, we give you praise for all the beauty that you have made sun that shines and nourishes our bodies and calls forth the flowers to lift their heads to greet you. Thank you for the warm smiles of kind strangers and the hugs of encouragement that we receive from friends and family. Thank you for hope and moments of joy and acts of love. May we cherish each blessing with gratitude, grateful hearts, and grow in love and compassion for one another and for all that you have made. And we pray, dear Lord, for your guidance upon our Bethel community. Lead us, Lord, to our home of worship where we can be together in your name. Help us to fulfill the purpose that you have for our lovely church family. And please raise up the right leadership among us and bless those who are currently our leaders as we go forward. May we find ways to continue to draw together in love and faith and good stewardship. And please, Lord, continue to bless the unhoused and the mentally ill. May we find ways to ease their suffering and all the suffering of your children. And may a special blessing be upon all of the fathers and all of the families. And may my father, who I lost a year ago today, be resting in your merciful peace. And I pray this peace upon us all, and especially those who have lost loved ones this last year. And may all the families and souls and friends of these, excuse me, may all the family and friends of these beloved souls find comfort in you and your plan for each of us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's see, first we have uh, Mary Herbert has asked for prayers for the Boyts, who are hoping to travel home to Kenya on Wednesday as restrictions have lifted. We pray that they will have traveling mercies. Lord, hear our prayers. Thank you, Judy, for uh, raising prayers for my family and I as um, we think about the loss of my father. Lord, hear our prayers. Ryan asked for prayers for Victoria and Phyllis as they continue to grieve the loss of their daughter, Amy. Lord, hear our prayers. And Victoria asked for prayers of healing and reconciliation for Judy's family. Lord, Hear our prayer. And I believe it's Ash is asking for all the prayers for all their fathers and their relationships with their families. Lord, hear our prayers. An angel is asking for prayers for her dog, Dude, who's a beautiful dog, 
God, please bless him and that he may have a healthy, long, and wonderful life. Lord, hear our prayers. I'll give a few more moments for any other prayers, but I'd also like to continue to lift up prayers for our world climate change and the heat wave we are experiencing. And if we can miraculously get some rain this summer to help ease the fires, that would be wonderful, Lord, with you all things are possible. Lord, hear our prayers. Stephanie is asking for prayers of comfort for Pastor Kenneth, his daughters, and Auntie Annette as they grieve the passing of Auntie Anita. Lord, hear our prayer. Mary is asking for prayers for her father who is suffering with, ter with terminal cancer. May he have peace, Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And Brian is asking for prayers for Debbie's family who lost their dear sister Debbie and father this year. Lord, hear our prayers. For Tina is asking for prayers for fathers who have lost children and struggle with this day. Lord, hear our prayers. Victoria is asking for traveling mercy prayers for Dale and Brian. And may it also be a healing, restoring, wonderful journey in time. Lord, hear our prayers. Ashk is asking for prayers for all of the father-child relationships, good and not so good, and the struggling and everything in between. Lord, hear our prayers. We have also received a request for prayers for um, a friend, Lauren, who is passed from COVID and is being buried this week. We pray for his wife and his family. Lord, hear our prayers. John is asking for prayers for his best animal friend, Oliver, as he struggles to maintain health. May God bless Oliver with healing. Lord, hear our prayers. And prayers for Azalea, who was shot at a house party and is now in a wheelchair. Oh my goodness. Lord, hear our prayers. Stephanie asks for prayers of strength, wisdom, and love for all people who serve as father figures in this world. Lord, hear our prayers. Well, I would also like to ask for continued prayers for all of the COVID victims, as it is still very much around throughout the world. Uh, may they May we continue to have more vaccinations and um, learn how to deal better with this uh, with with this new virus that's being with that's going to continue to be with us. And for those who are struggling for healing, we pray for them all. Lord, hear our prayers. Um, we also ask for prayers for healing the division that is currently still exists in our nation that we can find ways to reach out to one another and bridge those gaps between us. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, that truth and justice and love will always prevail. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for hearing all the prayers that we bring to you together as a community, but also privately in our hearts. We know that you hear them all and that with you, all things are possible. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now we're going to say a prayer in the words that our Lord taught us. It is a new version that we prayed last week. I like it. It's very nice. So if you'll please join me or in another way feels comfortable to you. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and all that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God who is in heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by people of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come upon earth. With bread we need for today, feed us. And the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. May it be so. Amen. Amen. 
as you gather those um, meaningful things to you as we prepare to receive communion, I just want to say thank you to all of those who have participated in our worship service up to this point. Um, it's a volunteer crew and um, we get pretty good service from our volunteers. Special thanks to Kevin for saying yes, not to Kenneth, but saying yes to the Holy Spirit and then allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through you to those of us who may be seasoned fathers, those of us who may be fathers in the future, and those of us who are parents and grandparents. Um, thank you for speaking from your heart. And may we open our heart to the Spirit as you have done for this moment. And may you continue to open your heart to God um, as you seek to be the best you can be as a person. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and then he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. This is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to pray with me. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of grace. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in love towards each other for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord inspire you to follow and hear the leadings of the Holy Spirit. We have gathered this Father's Day 2021 to worship. And now I invite you to go into the world and take the fuel that you have received from this worship experience and from each other to your neighbors, to your friends, to your co-workers, to your family, sharing the love of Christ. Amen. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh he chases me down fights to I'm 
felt no worth you paid it all for me yes you have been so so